Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. It is the 31st of October, the year of our Lord 2020. It is Reformation Day, Saturday. And tonight, our devotion is the 40th Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the books it is written of me. I desire to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O oh Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance from within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and of your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. As for you, O Lord, you will not restrain your mercy from me. Your steadfast love and your faithfulness will ever preserve me. For evils have encompassed me beyond number. My iniquities have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head. My heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who put to shame and disappointed altogether who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my hurt. Let those appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. We give thanks to you, Lord Jesus, for your bitter suffering and painful death, whereby you purchased us from the pangs of eternal death. Thanks be to you that you have sent us the word of your salvation. Preserve it within us, pure and unadulterated. And whenever we hear or read it, reveal yourself to us as the Savior of our souls. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And tonight we continue with our study of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. As one who is in the Lord Jesus, I am truly convinced that no food is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for him it is unclean. So far, the text. So, just before this, Paul was explaining that one day we will all stand before the judgment seat of God and give account. We will all kneel before the Lord of our own will and praise and honor and giving all respect to Him. Or being forced to our knees as the rebel and disobedient person that we might be. But we will all face... God one day, and give an account. Now for some of us, that day has actually already come. For do you not know that it, 
is appointed unto each person death, then comes judgment. When were you judged in your death? When did you die in your baptism? Do you not know that each one of us who have been baptized have been baptized in to death into Christ? That we might be raised to new life in Him? And so, there was a judgment that already occurred, but even, even so, if we face God, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. You see, it's all about what Jesus did. It's not about what we do. And this idea of judging somebody, oh, how easy it is that we think we know better than someone else, that we're brighter and smarter and even more blessed. But we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that was part of what Reformation was all about, too. All about recognizing who we are. You see, that's what the law of God does. <clears throat> that's what the cross of Christ does. It shows us our sin. As we peer up onto the cross, we see Jesus who took all of our sin, our place, our damnation. And He took it in its fullness, no watering it down. And He defeated it. The cross shows us our sin, as does the law of God. It shows us our sin, that we can look upon that same cross and there see our Savior, the one who paid the price in full. There's not enough merit, not enough satisfaction, not enough of obedience to the law that you could save yourself, nor anybody. As someone like St. Paul, who was very pious, called himself a chief of sinner, isn't it rather arrogant that we would consider ourselves anything less? But it's just exactly that, that has allowed Jesus to come into the flesh, live a perfect life, the perfect life we could not, die a perfect death, a death that we dare not take to give us what we deserve, not eternal life. It's called the the incredible exchange, some people will call it. The great reversal, where the one who was sinless and holy allowed himself to be labeled sin. To carry our sin, be the sin bearer, to be the lamb without blemish, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, to bear our sin to the cross. And then rise again on the third day, victorious over sin, death, and the devil to give us eternal life and peace with God. You see, that's really what the Reformation's all about. Returning to the Word of God, sola scriptura, the Word of God alone. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. Understand your salvation in light of the Word of God. Not the Word of man. Not the works of man but the Word of God who became flesh. The Word of God preached into our ears. The Word of God that leads us down the path that we should walk. It's all in the Word. It's all about the Word. The Word made flesh who's come to save. So the Reformation is returning back to God's Word and the solas, sola scriptura, the Word alone. Scripture alone, sola fide, faith alone, and sola gratia, grace alone. All are a gift from God, so that we too might look upon the cross and say, Solus Christus, Christ alone. He is our rock, He is our salvation. Thank God. Thank Jesus. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. And I pray that our Lord is a mighty fortress in your life and forever. Blessed evening in the Lord.